okay in the last class we have discussed about the preparation properties and uses of nitrogen then ammonia then we had just started uh, the properties of nitric acid right now we are going to discuss the properties of nitric acid okay i think first two points we already discussed in the gaseous state it exists as a planar molecule then it behaves as a strong acid giving hydronium and nitrate ions k ions so this is the chemical reaction between this nitric acid and water hno3 plus h2o it will gives a hydronium ion that is h3o plus the nitrate ion okay so that's the reaction take place between nitric acid and water you know that nitric acid it's a strong acid so it will definitely produce h plus ions this h plus ions react with water to form hydronium ion okay that is h3o plus then the third one that is the concentrated nitric acid it's a strong oxidizing agent and attacks most metals except noble metals such as gold and platinum okay that is not noble gases here it is noble metals such as gold and platinum so this concentrated nitric acid it will react with metals to form certain products except gold and platinum so this concentrated nitric acid it will act as a strong oxidizing agent what's the role of strong oxidizing agent or oxidizing agent it will oxidizes other substances and it will reduce itself okay so here you can see the reaction copper and zinc right both the dilute and concentrated nitric acid it will reacts with this metals first case uh, in the uh, copper okay copper with dilute nitric acid copper with dilute nitric acid here copper nitrate is formed copper nitrate is formed then nitric oxide is formed nitric oxide is formed only difference in the nitrogen oxides first one it is nitric oxide when we are using concentrated nitric acid it will be nitrogen dioxide okay children the same reagent is used nitric acid in the first case it is diluted and in the second case it is concentrated in dilute nitric acid it will produce copper nitrate along with that nitric oxide will be formed but in the second case with concentrated nitric acid along with copper nitrate nitrogen dioxide will be formed clear okay only in the only the change in nitrogen oxides nitrogen oxides and the second one that's about zinc with dilute hno3 okay zinc with dilute hno3 here zinc nitrate is formed then h2o molecule n2o n2o with concentrated one no2 nitrogen dioxide is formed so the main product remains the same the by product will be changed when we are using dilute and concentrated one that's the difference normally met concentrated nitric acid it will uh, react with metals except this gold and platinum and it will act as a strong oxidizing agent okay then uh, when we are using dilute nitric acid nitrogen oxide nitric oxide will be formed and concentrated one nitrogen dioxide will be formed that's the difference between concentrated and dilute the main product remains same only the change in the by product and the fourth point some metals like chromium aluminum etc they do not dissolve in concentrated nitric acid because of the formation of a film of oxide on the surface this chromium and aluminum they do not dissolve in concentrated nitric acid because of the formation of a film of oxide on their surface there will be a coating on its surface and it cannot be dissolved in concentrated nitric acid because already one coating is formed then further reaction do not take place right that's why so i'm repeating in the case of metals like chromium and aluminum they do not dissolve in concentrated nitric acid because of the formation of a film of oxide on the surface then the last property that is concentrated nitric acid also oxidizes non metals 
first we are discussing about metal now about non metals so this iodine it will react with nitric acid and hio3 is formed hio3 is formed that is iodic acid okay iodic acid then in the case of carbon it will also react with nitric acid then carbon dioxide water molecule nitrogen dioxide is formed then the sulfur reacts with nitric acid here it is concentrated one then sulfuric acid nitrogen dioxide water molecule will be formed the next one about phosphorus it will react with nitric acid in concentrated form then phosphoric acid is formed along with that nitrogen dioxide and water molecule so this nitric acid it will react with both as uh, both metals and non metals okay both metals and non metals but in the case of some metals like chromium aluminum etc they do not dissolve in concentrated nitric acid because of the formation of a film of oxide on their surface it will prevent the further reaction so they do not completely dissolve in water that's about their properties Aditya, can you read the first two properties? In the ash state, it exists as planar molecule. It behaves as a strong acid, giving hydronium and nitrate ions. Yes. Then, Rijas, can you read the third one? Concentrated nitric acid is a strong oxidizing agent and attacks most metals except noble mm -hmm. metals such as gold and platinum. Yes. Then Sharon, fourth one. Uh, some metals, example chromium and aluminium, do not dissolve in concentrated nitric acid mm -hmm. because of the formation of a film of oxide on the surface. Okay. Then now we're in last one. Concentrated nitric acid also oxidizes non-metals. Mm -hmm. Okay, non-metals. Okay, that's about their properties. Then the next important thing that's about brown ring test. Okay, that is very important one. We are um, doing the same brown ring test in our lab for identification of nitrates. Okay, identification of nitrates. So it's very important. Brown ring test of nitrates. Brown ring test of nitrates. It's for the identification of nitrates. Identification of nitrate ion in a molecule. Molecule. So here the test is that to a nitrate solution. Okay. To a nitrate solution, freshly prepared ferrous sulfate solution is added. To a nitrate solution, freshly prepared ferrous sulfate solution is added. Then concentrated H2SO4 acid is added along the sides of the test tube. Not directly added to the test tube. We just add it through the sides of the test tube. Then a brown ring is formed at the interface of these two liquids. Okay. First uh, we add the nitrate solution. Then freshly prepared ferrous sulfate solution is added. Then H2SO4 is added along the sides of the test tube. When this H2SO4 reaches the liquid, there will be a brown ring formed at the junction between these two liquids. So this brown ring will confirm the presence of nitrate ion in a molecule. Can be clearly seen that brown ring. Okay. So this test is known as brown ring test. It's used for the identification of nitrate ion present in a molecule. And here, this is the chemical reaction take place there. Okay chemical reaction take place there fe2 plus is converted to fe3 plus okay fe2 plus it is converted to fe3 plus through this uh, yeah the nitrates have a capacity to reduce this nitrates to nitric oxide okay wait wait children Yes, first you look at the chemical reaction take place here. Already nitrate ion is present there in that solution. Then from this ferrous sulfate solution, Fe2 plus is there. Fe2 plus. 
it will react together to form nitrogen oxide right no then this fe2 plus it will be converted to fe3 plus that means that means it will act as an reducing agent and it will reduce this nitrogen this hno3 that means nitrate ion to nitrogen oxide that's the chemical reaction take place there i will repeat it once again this fe2 plus ion it will act as a reducing agent so it will reduces the nitrate ion present in nitric acid to nitrogen oxide okay and this ion it will be formed a complex feh2o6 2 plus here this one is a complex these two reacts together to form a complex that is feh2o6 2 plus and it will react with this nitrogen oxide to form a big complex that is a brown colored complex will be formed that is a brown ring formed in the junction between these two liquids clear children so this is the chemical reaction take place there to identify nitrate solution we will add freshly prepared for a sulfate solution then we will add this h2so4 okay concentrated h2so4 along the sides of the test tube here you can see a brown ring is formed at the junction between these two liquids so here this brown colored substance it's a complex made by i feh2o5 no2 plus that is the complex formed in this reaction and this fe2 plus ions it will be convert the nitrate ion to nitrogen oxide or nitric oxide this one is nitric oxide no this one is nitrate ion this is known as brown ring test of nitrates so is clear children yes or no it's very important yes diya yes. can you please read brown ring test of nitrates to a nitrate solution freshly prepared for a sulfate solution is added mm -hmm. and then concentrated h2so4 acid along the side of test tube is added mm -hmm. then a brown ring at the interface is formed yes then the reaction no3 plus 3 fe2 plus plus 4h plus gives no nitrate ion is converted to nitric oxide due to the presence of fe2 plus because it's a strong reducing agent okay so it will be reduces this nitrate ion to nitric oxide and fe2 plus it will be converted to fe3 plus okay clear children that's about this brown ring test so you have to remember always this is the method of identification of nitrate ion present in a molecule this is considered as the conformation test for the presence of nitrate ion in a molecule a brown colored complex is formed that is the brown ring formed in the junction between these two liquids okay so that's about the properties of this nitric acid then the uses are remaining so who will read the uses all of you please be shown your videos sharan sania rijas naurin gayatri srihari minakshi malavika alvin Michael, Adul, Nia, Krishna, Shivani, Ashwin, Aryan, Steffi, Lydia. All of you. Okay, Anna, can you read the uses? Yes, ma'am. The major use of nitric acid is in the manufacture of ammonium nitrate for fertilizers and other nitrates for use in explosives and uh, pyrotechnics. It is also used for the preparation of nitroglycerin uh, tri nitro nitro toluene, toluene and other organic tri nitro toluene and other organic nitro compounds other major uses are in the picking of pickling of stainless steel and uh, and uh, ma'am i don't and it's an oxidizer in rocket fuels right Uh, no, ma'am. Before that, Itch, etching of metals. Ah, uh, there is one term before ah uh, that related to the uses of 
डाई नाइट्रजन राइट क्रयो सर्जरी दैट्स टू रिमूव सर्टेन अनवांटेड टिश्यूज दैट इज क्रयो सर्जरी ओके क्रयो सर्जरी मीन्स रिमूवल ऑफ अनवांटेड टिश्यूज देन द रोल ऑफ दैट पंप इन दिच प्रोसेस एबर्स प्रोसेस राइट अच्छू रोल ऑफ दैट पंप दैट्स जस्ट टू सर्कुलेट दिस नाइट्रोजन एंड हाइड्रोजन फॉर्म ड्यूरिंग द रियाक्शन अगेन बैक टू द कैटलिस चेम्बर दैट्स द मेन रोल ऑफ दैट पंप ओके यस then here it is used as the manufacture of ammonium nitrate for fertilizers and other nitrates for use in explosives and pyrotechnics what is pyrotechnics pyrotechnics firework display okay fireworks display that's known as pyrotechnics then it is used for the preparation of nitroglycerin trinitrotoluvin and other organic nitro compounds then it is used in the pickling of stainless steel right pickling of stainless steel uh, it's a process uh, pre passivation process of treating stainless steel while the preparation of stainless steel there is one process that is known as pickling of stainless steel during the manufacture of stainless steel there is one process okay in this process it will be carried out using hydrochloric acid and sulfuric acid to remove the oxide scale that is known as pickling of stainless steel and this etching of metals that's also comes under the purification step clear children so that's about the different uses of this nitric acid then i told you the phosphorus 7.6 7.7 7.8 7.9 these portions are deleted then we are moving to group 16 elements so we have completed group 15 elements now we are moving to group 16 elements which are the group 16 elements group 16 which family is that group 16 oxygen family okay group 16 they are known as oxygen family or otherwise known as chalcogens group 16 oxygen family otherwise they are known as chalcogens and these are the members of this group 16 oxygen sulfur selenium tellurium polonium then one more that is a radioactive element that is livermorium livermorium in the previous group also there is one element moscovium right it's a radioactive element it can be synthetically produced and it's in very limited amount so we cannot able to learn the complete properties of that element in the case of this liver morium also it's a radioactive element can be synthetically produced not available in not available in nature so we cannot uh, determine the complete properties it's only produced in very limited amount limited amount so we cannot completely learn the properties of liver morium so these are the elements present in group 16 they are known as oxygen family or otherwise chalcogens oxygen sulfur selenium tellurium polonium clear children all of you switch on your videos emmanuel can you read the names of the elements present in group 16 oxygen sulfur selenium tellurium 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 Polonium. 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 Then. Liv. Uh, liver. Ammonia. Liver. Ammonia. Okay. It's a synthetic radioactive element. Synthetic radioactive element. With its symbol LV, atomic number one sixteen. and from the previous group itself here the first two are non metals oxygen and sulfur non metals then yes selenium and tellurium they are metalloids then this polonium and livermorium they belong to the category of metals
now we are going to discuss about the occurrence of these elements okay occurrence of these elements so first one oxygen okay uh, oxygen is the most abundant element that present in the earth atmosphere right uh, about 46.6 percent that is uh, contained of oxygen in the earth crust then in the case of the sulfur it will be available in the form of certain sulfides okay sulfides uh, that is galena singblend copper pyrites in all this it's available in the form of sulfides okay and the traces of sulfur can be also present in certain volcanoes volcanoes then uh, in organic materials such as eggs protein garlic onion mustard hair and wool it contains sulfur so these are the available sources of oxygen and sulfur then we are moving to selenium and tellurium it will be found as metal selenides and tellurides they are also available in sulfide ores okay sulfide ores then in the case of polonium it will occurs in nature as a decay product of thorium and uranium minerals decay product of thorium and uranium minerals then i told you about livermorium it's a synthetic radioactive element synthetic radioactive element so that's about the occurrence of these metals then we are moving to the electronic configuration so you have to just uh, read this portion related to occurrence of the elements present in group 16 then their electronic configuration do you remember the electronic configuration of group 15 anyone group 15 Michael, can you tell me electronic configuration of group fifteen? Think about the members. Nitrogen. What will be their configuration? Yes. Anyone? General configuration of group fifteen elements. Two and three and plus two. NS2 NP1 to 6 NP3 for group 15 NP3 yeah here it is NS2 NP4 okay for group 16 that's the general configuration you can just try with oxygen atomic number is 28 so we can write the configuration 1s2 2s2 2p4 right this yes. then the next member is sulfur its atomic number is 16 right so it is 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p4 so we can write the general configuration ns2 np4 clear children that's about their configuration then about atomic and ionic radii atomic and ionic radii atomic or ionic radii here what trend followed by this atomic and ionic radii in the previous group is it increases or decreases in a group increases increases right because the number of shells also increases the same pattern here from top to bottom it will be increases top to bottom atomic radii increases increases okay so we have discussed electronic configuration atomic radii then we are moving to ionization enthalpy same trend followed by the uh, previous group okay ionization enthalpy it will decreases from top to bottom right ionization enthalpy it will decreases from top to bottom so you can write the ionization enthalpy it 
decreases from top to bottom. Due to the increase in size. Okay. What is ionization energy or ionization enthalpy? The energy required to remove the electron from the outermost shell, right? Energy required to remove the electron from the outermost shell. So here, when we are moving from top to bottom, this ionization enthalpy decreases because increase in size and the effective nuclear charge will be decreases. So it is very easy to remove this electron from the outermost shell due to screening effect. These things you have learned in plus one, right? So that's about ionization enthalpy, then electron gain enthalpy. <clears throat> electron gain enthalpy. Electron gain and LP, the energy required to accept an electron, right? Normally, it will follow the trend. Uh, electron gain and LP also decreases from top to bottom. But in the case of oxygen and sulfur, this oxygen, it is less electronegative than sulfur. Oxygen is less electronegative than sulfur. Okay, then uh, from the next element onwards, from sulfur onwards, it will increase. Sorry, sulfur onwards, it will decrease, right? Yes. Because in the case of electron gain in the LP, we are considering negative charge. That's it. Okay, clear children? Oxygen is less electronegative than sulfur. Then from sulfur onwards, this values decreases. That means less negative up to polonium. That's the trend. Clear? If this is not clear, you can write there from sulfur onwards, it will be less negative. negative up to polonium. That's about electron gain and LP. The next property that is electronegativity. Okay, electronegativity. Have you completed this one, children? Yes or no? Yes. Yes, okay. The next one is electronegativity. Electro negativity. What about electronegativity? Which is the most electronegative atom in the periodic table? Fluorine. Yeah, it's fluorine, right? Then the second most electronegative element is oxygen. Oxygen, that is the second most electronegative element. And this electronegativity, it also decreases down the group. Okay, decreases down the group. So from oxygen to polonium, it will be decreases. That's about electronegativity. Clear children? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. All of you, please be shown your videos. All of you, please be shown your videos. Then we discussed about the physical properties. They are meta which are the metals, which are the metalloids, then which are the non-metals present in this category, right? First one. First and second one that belongs to Non-metals, which are they? Oxygen and sulfur, right? Oxygen and sulfur, they are non-metals. Then tellurium and polo uh, selenium and tellurium, they are metalloids. Then polonium and livermorium, they are metals. 
okay and all this elements they will exhibit allotropy what is allotropy what is allotropy children yes what is allotropy can exist in different forms very good can exist in different forms right so in the case of all the elements present in group 16 they can exist in different forms okay then uh, in the case of melting point and boiling point it will increases with increase in atomic number okay so you can note the melting point and boiling point it will increases increases with increase in atomic number they can exist as allotropes so these all comes under the physical properties of these elements okay physical properties of these elements then now we are going to discuss about the anomalous behavior of oxygen atom okay oxygen is the first member of this family right so they have shown very large deviation from the other members of the group okay in the last group uh, in the group 15 we have learned certain anomalous behavior of nitrogen compared to other elements similarly here oxygen also show certain properties that deviated from the other members of the group so shall i move to next one children eight yes so the three main reasons for the anomalous behavior of oxygen their small size that's the first member of the group right they have only s and p orbitals they do not have d orbitals so due to their small size then high electronegativity compared to other elements in the group third one absence of d orbitals so these three are the reasons for the anomalous behavior of oxygen compared to the other members in the group small size high electronegativity absence of d orbitals clear then there are certain questions related to the oxidation state okay we can discuss the questions and answers first one why water is a liquid and h2s is a gas though oxygen and sulfur belong to the same group okay oxygen and sulfur they belong to group 16 but this water it is exists in the form of liquid and h2s that will remains as gas the reason for that okay oxygen atom has small size and high electronegativity therefore it is capable of forming hydrogen bonds which is not possible in h2s we know that in h2o there is possibility for hydrogen bond right but in the case of h2s there is no such formation of uh, hydrogen bond between the molecules and due to the small size and high electronegativity of oxygen atom it will be exist in the form of liquid due to the presence of hydrogen bonding it has a compact structure and is present in liquid state that's the reason why which this h2o will remain as liquid and h2s as gas okay clear children this is clear okay then next one about the stability of oxidation state why does the stability of plus 4 oxidation state increase down the group while that of plus 6 decreases so the most common oxidation state shown by this group 16 elements are plus 4 and plus 6 okay plus 4 and plus 6 
and among this plus 4 and plus 6 the stability of plus 4 oxidation state it will increase down the group that means chances for the oxidation state plus 4 it will be increases down the group and this plus 6 oxidation state it will be decreases and the reason is that the general outer electronic configuration of 16th group element that is ns2 np4 therefore the common oxidation state would be plus 4 and plus 6 and the stability of plus 4 it will increase due to the inert pair effect we had discussed about inert pair effect in the last class right the inner shells that contains s electrons that uh, do not take part in chemical reactions due to the inert pair effect of this s orbital the stability of plus 4 it will increase and plus 6 it will be decreases so you can learn the reason inert pair effect inert pair effect Okay, then the last one, why does oxygen limit its covalency to 4 or why cannot oxygen expand its covalency beyond 4 while the other elements can do so. In the case of configuration of oxygen, you know that 1s2, 2s2, 2p4, these are the only orbitals present, means d orbitals are vacant in the configuration of oxygen atom right so due to the absence of these d orbitals the covalency of oxygen atom it will limit to four it cannot go beyond four but other elements they have d orbital so their oxidation state will increases plus four plus six etc and then you have to remember the most common oxidation state present in group 16 that is plus four and plus six clear children Is clear any doubt yes okay then about the reactivity of this group 16 elements towards hydrogen then oxygen halogens first we will start with hydrogen so all the elements combine with hydrogen to form hydrates of the type h2e this is the general formula that's uh, in the chemical bond formation between the elements in this group h2 that for hydrogen then e stands for the elements present in group 16 so this is the general equation clear children h2o h2s like that h2sc that for selenium then tellurium h2te like that so the general equation to uh, write down the chemical formula uh, with the reaction with hydrogen that is h2e and this acidic character, it will increase from top to bottom. Acidic character, it will increase from top to bottom because of the decrease in bond dissociation and alpha down the group. Bond dissociation and alpha means the energy required to break the bond. Okay. This acidic character, it will increase from top to bottom. That means they are more capable of donating H plus ions. Along with that, this bond, dis bond association and alpha decreases. Okay, bond association and alpha decreases. Only less amount of energy is needed to break the bond between the atoms when we are moving from top to bottom in a group. And their thermal stability also decreases down the group. That's why it's very easy to break the bond between these uh, atoms. Okay, so you have to remember acidic character increases from top to bottom. Their bone dissociation and alpha decreases from top to bottom. Then their thermal stability also decreases down the group because of the increase in their bond length. Their bond length increases in a group from top to bottom. And except water, all hydrates have reducing property and this increases down the group. Except water. So the molecule formed with oxygen that is considered as an exception. All other hydrates except water, it will have reducing property. Reducing property means it have a, it has a capacity to reduce other elements. Okay, have reducing property and this increases down the group. Moving from top to bottom, it will be increases. So that's about the reactivity towards hydrogen. Okay. Then we are moving to the reactivity towards oxygen. One minute. Yeah. The same thing here. 
yeah before that there are certain questions related to the reactivity towards hydrogen h2s is less acidic than h2 te i told you this acidic character it will be increases when moving from top to bottom right due to the decrease in bond dissociation and alpha down the group acidic character increases the same reason bond dissociation and alpha it will decreases from top to bottom so their uh, acidic character increases okay they will ready to donate h plus ions more easily because small amount of energy is required the next question h2t is the strongest reducing agent among the group 16 hydrates why down the group bond and alpha decreases making the loss of hydrogen easier hence the reducing property also increases and the tellurium it's the last member hence the strongest reducing agent this reducing character also increases from top to bottom right so tellurium is considered as the last member so it will be a strongest reducing agent clear children that's related to the re, uh, reaction with hydrogen i will share the slides to the group no need to worry okay then the reactivity towards oxygen here also there are two general formulas for the formation of their oxides eo2 and eo3 okay eo2 and eo3 all the elements form oxides of the formula eo2 and eo3 the reducing properties of dioxides it will decreases down the group reducing properties of this dioxides it will be decreases down the group then all oxides are acidic in nature so how can we write the um, oxide of this formula can you tell me one example here it is eo2 eo2 then eo3 so2 then so3 like that okay the case of first one oxygen it is o3 ozone clear children so this is the general formula they are reducing properties of dioxides it will decrease us down the group then all oxides are acidic in nature that's about the reactivity towards oxygen then next one reactivity towards halogens yes now so o2 here already eo2 right eo2 first element is o o plus o2 that is ozone o3 clear yes the next one reactivity towards halogens here there are certain three types of general formula ex6 ex4 ex2 e stands for elements present in group 16 x stands for halogens okay there are different halogens fluorine chlorine bromine iodine here in the elements oxygen sulfur then selenium tellurium like that and the stability of this halides also decreases down the group in the order starting from fluorine fluorine is greater than chlorine then bromine iodine so their stability also decreases down the group uh, when they are reacting with halides Okay, halides and oxygen family. Among this hexa halides, hexa fluorides are the only stable halides. They are gaseous in nature and have octahedral structure. There are different types of hexa halides. Hexa means six halides present. E X six. That is hexa halides. E X six. In this formula, only hexa fluorides are the only stable halides. E F six. they are gaseous in nature and have octahedral structure then the sulfur hexafluoride sf6 is exceptionally stable for steric reasons steric reasons means when bulky group comes to that um, element it will be very difficult for the um, molecule to remain stable okay so due to this reason steric reason sf6 is exceptionally stable clear children that's about the reactivity towards halogens so we have discussed the reactivity towards hydrogen then oxygen halogens then the remaining things we can discuss in the next class so these are the basic physical and chemical properties related to group 16 then we can discuss the 
compounds formed from this group 16 in the next class i will share the slides okay then if you have any doubt you can ask me okay children yes i know that i am going little bit fast but please try to cooperate okay okay children uh, let me take your attendance this way okay then thank you all see you in the next class bye thank you